The One Piece fan letter came out. I saw this when it popped up on my feed, and I noticed that a lot of people were watching this without having seen any of the story. And like, hey, if this is what makes you get into the story because you find this fascinating, it's like, that's great. But it is spoiling content that's like 500 chapters deep. If you at all want to avoid spoilers, I wish there was a like short, fun, no stakes way to get into the series. A way to show the potential of what you're going to get into. The beautiful in-depth world building, the like fun, goofy characters and atmosphere, the drama and like tight knit storytelling that this story is known for. And I wish there was a way to showcase that like, hey, this is a snippet of what the story is like without you getting absolutely absolutely spoiled. The special, despite being compact, I think it's like 30 minutes. It's shorter than like the movies and a lot of the filler. I still think it is gorgeous on all aspects. The animation is so fluid. It's using like the new, um, the newest arc animation. The special also feels like it has some of the tightest writing compared to the rest of the side content. And that's something that I haven't seen in like some of the filler or movies that have a uh, double, triple, the screen time. So enough side tangents, let's dive into the special. It takes place during Sabaori and focuses on brand new characters, one of which is this girl who wants to be like Nami and wants to send her a letter, and the other are two marines who were impacted by the events in Marineford. The A-plot focuses around a girl who looks up to Nami. I'm not really sure whether she truly wants to be a pirate in the same manner as Nami, but it's clear that she looks up to her for a lot of traits other than just raw strength. There is a connection to her as like an idol who represents intelligence and strategy in a world full of like raw strength. And that is a beautiful concept. There are so many characters in this story that I like that don't always get the spotlight, like Kaya or Foxy or Mr. Tom, which have traits or philosophies other than strength. And we see that expressed through her character design. She is very deliberately trying to look like Nami at the beginning. She doesn't seem contempt at her everyday life. So Nami is depicting that idealized freedom that the girl wants so much. In the A-plot, we get this beautiful arc where the girl realizes that she can play a role in the outcome of the Straw Hat's success and very deliberately breaks away from her personal obsession with Nami to fulfill a much more impactful success for Nami's crew. And again, you get to see that through her character design. She's very much like Nami at the beginning, even to a fault. And when she gets a moment to help the Straw Hat succeed, she puts that personal connection with Nami aside to focus on the broader picture. The glasses are like a nice metaphor for putting all that into focus. And all of that is done in a way where the Straw Hats wouldn't even notice, but it is such a strong victory for her. The B story focuses on two brothers who at first seem like they're not getting along too well, right? Like the younger brother is making fun of the older one for falling behind and their dynamic is charming, but in a like, how do you put up with this guy kind of way, which is where Marine Ford kicks in. As a side note, I mentioned that I loved the A plot for the girl's obsession with Nami and how that doesn't really relate to Nami's strength whatsoever. But I really love that the B story mimics that by having the older brother like Luffy. Again, not for his raw strength, but rather for a very personal attachment to Luffy. The older brother trying to get the younger brother parallels nicely with Luffy trying to get back Ace. And the events of Marineford answer why this guy has such an emotional attachment to his brother. Because you almost lost him and you saw what could have happened to him in another timeline. Similar to the A-plot, we see the actions of powerful people through the lens of powerless individuals. The Summit War Saga already felt hectic when you're seeing it through the perspective of these like much bigger fish, but when you are seeing it through the perspective of the small fry, uh, it's something else. And it kind of does not feel like One Piece to me. Like, uh, I, don't, I don't really know how to explain it, but it felt uh, it felt real. I think that's because, uh, like, if a building falls on, like, Zoro or Luffy, I'm like, ah, they're fine. But I think if it falls on one of these characters, they're done for. Because uh, I think these characters in the special are a lot more fragile. And they can't survive getting, like, Falcon punched off the map. 
there are some interesting notes in the special that I would like to talk about. Firstly, I think it's just beautiful that we're able to repurpose these arcs and turn a minor character that like did not really influence the story, or at least in any visible manner, and turn them into a pivotal character in this special. Despite it being 30 minutes and it having to juggle more characters than it realistically should have, even more than some of the movies, it felt like it did such a good job at resolving every character's arc. Even if it's something small like, I want to go see Brooke perform, or I love Chopper so much, and we somehow get to turn that into something more. In this special, the side characters feel so potent in their design to easily read out, oh, you're trying to parallel this character, or oh, you really like this character, and it just feels so intentional and well done. Again, I think that's something that a lot of the movies don't really do a good job at. One of the motifs that this special uses, which I am surprised that we haven't used in a main story, maybe, you'll have to tell me if we have used this visual motif in like a side story or movie or filler arc that I'm not aware of, but I am surprised that we haven't seen the visual motif of interconnecting puzzle pieces. Is it very on the nose to use puzzle pieces in a story called One Piece? Yes, it is. But is it very beautiful to see a bunch of characters who have very little in common coming together to share a similar end goal, visually being able to see the puzzle pieces coming together as their dreams are getting closer to being achieved? Visually seeing every puzzle piece fall right before their eyes, unable to put it together when something goes wrong. I think that's very beautiful. And for how strongly the story interconnected arcs into broader sagas, I am surprised that we have not used this motif more. Finally, um, here are some things that I don't think fit anywhere else, but I think are cool. The Straw Hats interacting with a lot of our side characters. Now, it can feel very forced putting Usopp or Robin in to interact with these characters from the special so that it feels more intentional, like these side characters were intentionally in this arc, but I don't really mind that. It felt like the special wanted to appeal to a lot of the fans by having interactions that didn't really matter, like the Zoro versus Mihawk debates or like the Sanji versus Zoro debates. I don't think we needed that, but it's funny and it didn't take away from the story. I'm sure that somebody pointed and was like, oh, that's just like me. It makes it feel like really nice fan fiction. That's what I thought about the special.